Warrior Cats is putting out a new graphic novel just like they have been for the past, uh, I don't know, four or five years. But the difference between this new graphic novel and the graphic novels that they've done in the previous years is that this one is an adaptation. The preview for the new graphic novel has been out for a while, and I know I'm critical of Warrior Cats 90% of the time, but I want to say really fast that this graphic novel is the best thing I have seen from them. Ever. This is genuinely just 100% fantastic. I don't have any criticisms. I have no negativity. It looks fantastic and I'm in love. The characters have so much personality. The dialogue is improved. The characters have individual faces. I can recognize every single character instantly without it having to be pointed out who's who. It's expressive. It's fantastic. It's so nice to see that this can even be something we get. I love the whole thing. I hope they allow this team to keep going and make a graphic novel adaptation of the whole entire series. I hope that they're being paid lots and lots of money and that they get all the way through a vision of shadows. Oh, please be paying them lots and lots of money. If you told me that Warrior Cats would be getting a graphic novel adaptation, I would be terrified. I would be worried that the style would be too realistic, or based on the new book covers, or the kind of overly realistic and occasionally inaccurate, you know, website and merch imagery. I'd be worried that the cats would look too same-faced and stiff. But this is literally the best thing I could imagine. This is better than I would have ever expected if I had heard they were making a graphic novel before finding out of it. This is a product that feels like the people making it actually had fun and enjoyed making it. The artists and adapters are, and I apologize if I pronounce anything wrong, Natalie Reese and Sarah Getter. Oh man, it's really obvious that I re-recorded that bit. Who have worked on multiple graphic novels together in the past. So the team is experienced, the preview images that we've gotten are fantastic, and overall the whole thing seems like uh, the best Warrior Cats anything we've ever been presented with. It has character. I know, I just keep saying, I love this, it's good, I agree, it's great, but like, I can't, I can't help it. I'm not usually one to gush. I said that earlier, but look at this. Everybody loves this Silver Stream, and you know what? I also love this Silver Stream, and this has to be the way that Silver Stream is for the rest of time. I know that I've always been someone who draws her as being, like, skinny and kind of like a, like a parody of the way that the fandom does it, but you know what? I'm throwing that out the window. From now on, she's buff. She j she's canonically buff. Look at her. It's coming out in July, which is a little ways off now, and I've held off for quite a while on talking about it in particular, although I did mention it in my mouse for a video, but it, just because it would be so long before it came out, but let me be more specific about what I like about this. I don't have a very big problem with the Warrior Cats graphic novels from the past. They're all pretty okay. I'm going to compulsively call them mangas because despite not being in any way Japanese, they were marketed as manga at the time that they were published, and I even found them in the manga section of bookstores. I remember finding them on the same hubcap as the new Fruits Basket volume in Borders when I was a kid. I like the James Berry books, especially the most recent colored in ones, but I've always found them a little stiff. And I very greatly prefer, despite what I just said, the older, more soft style of the early Greystripe books a lot more than the style of what comes after, as the cats have rounder heads and more cat-like expressions. In later graphic novels, the cats have very human cheekbones, their noses are bigger than their eyes, and some of the girl cats have heavy mascara and eyeshadow that tends to make them a little bit less cute than the boy cats, kind of like a female Neopet. Don't get me wrong, I actually really like eyelashes despite everything, and I don't even mind them specifically as gender signifiers. I just don't like the effect that the heavy makeup look has on the cats. Often their eyes will take up the same real estate as the male character's eyes, but be less expressive for their makeup and size. Additionally, a lot of the cats will just have the same facial structure as all the other cats, with a couple type exceptions. He's got a bit of a cheekbony style, and then he's got a rounder, shorter head style that he seems to switch between lately. It's all very formulaic, and I've seen some people say that they really like this, and that's fine. This is all just my personal taste. James Barry is very good at what he does, and should feel really good about how long he kept up with making these things at such a fast pace. I can't imagine making a fully colored graphic novel in a year, especially not at the quality that he made them as one person. 
the poor Sasha manga gets bullied a lot for its art too, and I think the big problem with that one is really just an attempt at realism. Everyone in Sasha is rather traced stock photo looking. Warrior Cats has always leaned into realism as much as possible, but a lot of its artwork and merchandise leans into the wrong areas when they try. Simplifications are in order, you know? Don't focus so much on nostrils, gums, and lower lips, muscles, and anatomy. Those aren't going to be what you see when you think of a cat. They've got fur on them. My favorite of the previous mangas, and this is probably obvious, is The Rise of Scourge, which I think is a pretty popular opinion. While it does have a tiny hint of same face, that face is immediately appealing compared to the faces of the other cats. These cats are cute. They're also capable of killing and fighting and looking intimidating. I think that the style in the Scourge manga influenced our artwork as early Warrior Cats animation community people more so than almost any other canon book we had. In philosophy, this new book is similar to Rise of Scourge. The cats look expressive first and like cats second. While their faces are very fluid between shots, especially in these early preview pages, many of the characters presented to us through various previews have unique character design traits, which is something that's super in common in all of these other books. Sure, Graystripe has, like, some head fluff. But in shape, you really can't tell the difference between Brightheart and Firestar. White Storm is just a clone of Graystripe without that tuft of hair. And yeah, when you have this many cats to draw, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Every single time. It's what happened to me. If you look at my videos, all of the cats look the dang same. So I am not complaining. I am not saying, oh, they've done something terrible by having these, you know, similar designs. But that's what makes this new book so impressive. Not only is almost every character equipped with their own face and their own traits, most all of them are immediately recognizable. There's very little guesswork in the major players. Every character looks like themselves, not just from a book perspective, but also from a fandom perspective. Well, let, let's compare really quickly. Here's Longtail in the older manga books. Well, not the older ones. In a very, very recent manga book, here's Longtail. We can be reasonably sure he's Longtail, just from a glance, but compare him to this new Longtail. He looks like the Alley Cat Longtail, the SSS Warrior Cat's Longtail, the Longtail that most people are familiar with. The books call Longtail a pale tabby. Even his Warrior Cat's wiki sprite is less recognizable than the version of him that is presented in this book. Darkstripe looks like Darkstripe, Lionheart looks like Lionheart. Every single character looks plausibly or believably like them. Even Redtail and his corpse looks like we typically depict him, although nowadays the book covers actually show a version of Redtail that looks a lot like the fandom depiction as well. But even things that seem to be entirely the incentive and choices of the people who made these books are good choices. Ravenpaw seems to have this uniquely long, tall face. Longtail has downswept sideburns that change his entire shape. There's an implied scar that runs through Whitestorm's eyebrow, chopping it in half. And that's just the difference. Things like eyebrows. Whitestorm's eyebrow isn't an abstraction. Whitestorm here, as a character, as a person, has his own eyebrows. Cats here have eyebrows, and they have their own unique, personalized eyebrows. Graystripe has different eyebrows than Firepaw, than Blue Star, than Spotted Leaf, who has two different color eyebrows. Do real cats have eyebrows? No, of course not, but these cats have them, and they are part of their anatomy, and I love that. Things like this make this work better than the other manga books. There is character here. There's also very little gender distinction between the designs. The cats are not in boxes like this is a girl cat and this is a boy cat like they kind of are in previous works being distinguished by eyeshadow and stuff. The girl cats have choppy, frizzy beard hairs. Yellow Fang looks like Gritty. I am so happy that Yellow Fang looks like Gritty. Princess has cute single eyelashes in the corner of her eyes. But you know what? Blue Star doesn't. Sandpaw doesn't. Tiger Claw does. Tiger Claw has beautiful little eyelashes in almost every shot. The cats are designed very close to how they would be designed by a member of our own community, and while I don't think that this is where the artists hail from, you can tell that this is the first time we've gotten Warrior Cats content that is artistically designed by somebody who actually comes from a modern online creative environment. I can tell that they understand that to us, these are people who have emotions and relationships and personalities and lives. 
And aside from character designs, the other changes that they've made have all been pretty great too. Like the dialogue being made more casual or introducing Princess Early. It does wonders for the first arc narrative to introduce Princess Early and I'm not sure why nobody else has done it before. Like, let's compare two scenes. The final scene in the preview and then the same scene in the book. As Graypaw and Firepaw settled themselves beside the tree stump, a young she-cat crawled out from beneath the ferns. Her coat was ginger, like Firepaw's, but much paler, with barely visible stripes of darker fur. So here comes the new apprentice, she meowed, narrowing her eyes. Hello, Firepaw mewed. The young cat sniffed rudely. He smells like a kitty pet. Don't tell me I'm going to have to share my nest with that revolting stench. Firepaw felt rather taken aback. Since his fight with Longtail, all the cats had been quite friendly. Maybe they had just been distracted by Ravenpaw's news, he thought. You'll have to excuse Sandpaw, apologized Graypaw. I think she must have a furball stuck somewhere. She's not usually this bad-tempered. Psst, spat Sandpaw crossly. Hold on, youngsters, the deep voice of Whitestorm sounded behind the apprentices. Sandpaw! As my apprentice, I expected you to be a little more welcoming to this newcomer. Sandpaw held up her head and looked defiant. I'm sorry, White Storm, she purred, not sounding sorry at all. I just didn't expect to be training with a kitty pet, that's all. I'm sure you'll get used to it, Sandpaw, meowed White Storm calmly. Now, it's getting late, and training starts early tomorrow. You three should get some sleep. He gave Sandpaw a stern look, and she nodded obediently. As he walked off, she spun around and vanished into the clump of ferns, sniffing once more as she brushed past Firepaw. And then the final page, which summarizes the same event, is a lot more simple. We're supposed to sleep with that kitty pet stench in here? Blah! That's Sandpaw. Don't listen to her. The scene largely has the same emotion to it, except it's not a fraction as long, and at the end, Sandpaw isn't immediately punished by her mentor, not that it does any good in the book. In neither scene is she particularly determined to quit her behavior, and the smaller one works just as well as the larger one. All it really needed were those two panels. But the point comes across much clearer on the page. Here's Sandpaw, she's being rude to Firepaw and she's proud of it. We don't have Whitestorm coming in and spelling it out for us and or making it seem like maybe Sandpaw will stop. We can see the expression on her face and we don't need Whitestorm to come in and say, hey, stop being a bully, kid. Everywhere that they condensed this feels appropriate. I'm not looking at this and thinking, oh, wow, there's this scene that they really should have had in here. No. I mean, on some level, I think to myself, gee, I really wish they had drawn that mystery queen, you know, the one that shows up in Early Into the Wild and then never again. Or I think, oh, I wish they had included the mouse fur line so that we know which of these cats is mouse fur, which I'm pretty sure is the one with a little cheek scar. But as far as we have, this is a good adaptation, and I am looking forward to reading more of it. I am extremely excited. If you want the full version with all the words, sure. Go get the original book, because that's what you have, and it's not going to go away just because this doesn't include all the original words. Look at the silver stream.